So welcome, welcome, our beloved, brilliant, visionary colleague, Lise. We so appreciate you and all that you do for so many. And as always at Setsi, we give thanks to our creator. We acknowledge the original stewards of the various lands we're on. We acknowledge all our ancestors, all those who toiled without compassion or compensation. We acknowledge all our elders and community stalwarts whose shoulders we stand on as we build, share, and learn together for our collective liberation and sovereignty. So Lise, can you please introduce yourself to our listeners and viewers and share a bit about your remarkable work? First of all, thank you so much for having me here. Uh, it's, a, it's a big honor. My name is Lise Guericundavi, and I'm the co-founder and managing partner at BKR Capital. Um, when we first launched in 2021, we're the first Black-led VC fund that we're about managing institu institutional dollars. I always stumble on that word. And um, this initiative came uh, about, was, was born because of a need that we saw both myself and Isaac, more than a need, an opportunity that we saw. So we've been investing for quite some time. I spent my whole career on that side of you know, the table where you know I worked in hedge funds and funds of funds. I worked in impact, impact investment internationally. And it was always the same thing. You would find brilliant founders from our community that had a hard time to get the investment that would basically change the course, the trajectory of what they were building. And, um, you know, the investment space is definitely a for-profit space. It's about profit maximization. So it's not about, you know, somebody needing the funding, but it's about somebody who can actually turn these dollars into more dollars. And I was able to see that through those entrepreneurs. And I think from Isaac's perspective, probably the same thing, but it was just really hard to get um, asset allocators to also see it, right? So um, when we decided to partner to create the care capital, our objective was to go and seek those opportunities that were being missed by the market. You know, all those dollars left on the table and showcase that you can invest in amazing founders from our community. That's absolutely remarkable. And once again, visionary, pioneering a space of not just asset allocation, but really building the capacity and infrastructure of our community to access resources much needed to innovate. So once again, I appreciate your leadership. So my next question is, what inspires you about your work right now? What has you curious? Everything about what we do, I find is inspiring because we work with amazing entrepreneurs. Since so yes, sometimes I look at the founders in our portfolio and I'm just in awe because I see how, you know, great they are, the vision, the work that they put into what they're doing, I you know for none of them, you know, failure is not an option for any of them, right? So we we really are aligned in how we're seeing, you know, our work. And it's always much more than the product or the service we're creating. It's about how do we make the world a better place in our own way, right? Um it's 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 really interesting because you know you will have very uh, traditional businesses, for example, we have a um, SaaS product, a B2B SaaS product in the art space. So it doesn't seem very social in itself. And again, every enterprise is profit maximizing, but the way they are serving minority led art galleries, right? And really allowing them to improve their revenues. I feel like each of them will always find ways to make sure that their products are inclusive while still, you know, going for a maximum profit. And it's just really amazing. So what excites me on a regular basis is our ability to change the world, to contribute to um, a newer and better society with innovation. That's incredible, that's incredible. So what challenges and barriers do you face in your work and how are you and your colleagues working to overcome these challenges? In terms of challenges, it's really about um, having to deal with less generally in terms of resources but having expectations that are, I feel, probably are a lot higher than our peers. Um, so that can be something that is daunting at times, um, but you know, we're, we're, we're here for a challenge and we know that we, uh, and we, we're really behind our strategy, but you know, we manage a $22 million fund, um, which is a micro fund. If you're looking at the space in the venture capital industry in Canada, it's very, very small. So that also translates in very, very small management fees. But, you know, we, um, you know, have created initiatives to also build the ecosystem on the side. 
Um, we also are very small team, but we're trying to be as present as possible, different events, while we're also looking at, you know, speaking with as many entrepreneurs as possible, building our portfolio and being there for our portfolio companies. We want to be more than money. We want to be partners for growth. So it's a lot, you know, that we have to do. And this also translates to um, our portfolio companies as well, because it's the same thing. You know, the the what they're raising, if you can compare to other companies at their stage and even at the level of progression, it's probably a lot less. Um, but they're turning, you know, every dollar into much more and they're really creating miracles with what they have. Um, so yeah, it's a challenge, but you know, we're being resourceful and uh, and sometimes it's, all, it's, all, it's almost uh, a superpower too. Absolutely, you live up to the ancestor's name, Abakari. You you live up to the name of your organization in terms of making our ancestors proud and representing us so well. So once again, thank you so much. So my next question is: Do you have a set of key priorities right now in your work? So right now, our priority is really supporting our portfolio companies. Um, as I mentioned earlier, when we invest, we see ourselves as partners for growth. Um, we just started um, a scale up acceleration program in collaboration with EDC. So really uh, giving them, our portfolio companies, all the tools that they need to find the right partners outside um, in any way possible. All of them have different types of challenges that they're managing well, but we're trying to make sure that we're putting all our energy in, in, in supporting um, that growth. We have um, a fellowship program that we basically have built. When did we start it? I think it was in 2022. Now we're at our second cohort. And the goal is to diversify the investment space. Um, so that takes a bit of our time too. So we train mid-career professionals that they can basically go into the venture capital space and contribute to other funds. One of the big pushback we had when we were or originally fundraising was um, this doubt from investors that would find enough pipeline, enough Black entrepreneurs in the tech space in Canada, because they were not saying that many. And since we started, we spoke with thousands of entrepreneurs. It's true that we do have a lot of um, our community that is in the service industry, but there's a lot of people doing amazing things in the technology industry. And the reason why other VC funds probably don't see it is also sometimes a reflection of their own network. So how do we help support the ecosystem increasing their network? And that's what we're hoping to do with the fellowship by placing highly qualified um, professionals from our community in the venture capital space. That's one, and we're working also on um, other projects on the side where we could help, you know, build more asset allocators in the Black community. And we've been also quite active with uh, the new Black VC chapter in Canada. Yeah, congratulations. When I saw the launch of the new Black VC initiative that was from the States in Canada, it warmed my heart. And, and as well, thank you so much for demystifying the VC space and doing some myth busting around the pipeline. I think that 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 the, the work that you're doing is so important for our community in so many ways. So that leads to my next question: How do you feel about the future of venture capital in Canada? Um, are you optimistic? Are you pessimistic? Are you hopeful? I'm optimistic. I'm optimistic. I think that our ecosystem is younger than the states. We're sort of in the middle between Europe and the United States in terms of how conservative we are. Um, but you know, there's a growth of in terms of number of funds. We're seeing also uh, funds in every region of the country, really, uh, you know, when I speak with funds in the Atlantic region, for example, when I speak with funds in the Western side of Canada, there's really this desire to push the boundaries of innovation and finding those, you know, companies that will just make everybody's life better, which I find is exciting. Um, and, I and I love that, you know, we have initiatives like ours, like Raven, like stand up, like Exilia, you know, the fact that BDC itself has a woman in tech fund. Um, we are in a space that is typically extremely competitive because we all have to fight for the best deals. But you find that in Canada, we do collaborate quite a bit too, right? Which I find is extremely exciting. And um, despite the fact that we are in tough times from a macroeconomic perspective, it's um, to me, it's a bit of a cleanup. We were at a stage where valuations were unhealthy. It didn't make any sense. And um, there was little attention to building real businesses with real unit economics. And we went back to that, back to the basics. How do we think about eventually making profit, right? <laughs> 
So I, I'm, I'm pretty optimistic. That's incredible. And I agree in terms of the market valuations and just first principles thinking, but more importantly, the solidarity in the ecosystem. Raven Indigenous Impact Fund and Raven Indigenous Capital, Jeff Sear and Waki, they're doing tremendous work. And I think any time that we can operate in solidarity and amplify the work of our colleagues is remarkable. So thank you for that as well. So my next question is, what is your ultimate goal? And what does success look like and feel like to you and your colleagues? For us, success is... You know, our goal is to not have to have those conversations in, you know, hopefully five, six, seven, ten years from now. Um, being in an ecosystem where it's seen as normal to see diversity, nor normalizing diversity. I think that sometimes, unfortunately, when you're doing something new, groundbreaking that has a social impact, um, people lose touch with what is the, the objective and sort of stay into that problem. We want to eliminate that problem, <laughs> which is why we're doing all of these other activities where we want to see more, you know, black professionals in the venture capital space. We want to see more fund allocators from the black community because we, we do believe that economic empowerment solves a lot of problems in the long run. And we hope that our conversations will have shifted in a few years. And that's I, that's success. I couldn't agree more. And and since the inception of this remarkable um model that you and Isaac have developed, there's always been a sense of justice, access, inclusion, diversity, and equity. And I agree, it would be a beautiful world where we wouldn't have to have those conversations where it's normalized and it's a standard. So thank you. So my last question: Do you have any closing thoughts or calls to action for our listeners and our viewers? I guess my call to action would be. Um that you know as a community we need to stay together um again with that goal of finding a solution in the long term and we're different players in the ecosystem with different roles and sometimes some of those roles are overlapping and um we are sometimes our own biggest critics you know when we should be our biggest supporters there's no initiative that is perfect. And there's, there are initiatives with different types of objectives, right? And I'm going to give you a simple example. For example, at BKR, we are a venture capital firm. We'll never do anything else than being a venture capital firm. So that's profit maximizing. But then you have also other initiatives that are philanthropic by nature that we have to also support. And we cannot necessarily expect the opposite from one or the other. We, we each have our roles in the ecosystem. And something that we do um, at BKR, and that's very important to us, you know, it's it's a business where you say no, unfortunately, many more times than you say yes. We spoke with thousands of entrepreneurs. We have 12 portfolio companies. We'll have a maximum of 18. So when we say no, it's not always because the company is not good. It's just not a fit for us, right? Um, and sometimes it can be a bit disappointing because as a Black entrepreneur, you're like, oh, I'm seeing a Black fund. They won't invest in me. But it's not that simple. But something that we do is that if we can help in any way, shape, or form, we will because I feel that the success of a Black entrepreneur is our success. And it's Canada's success as well, right? And so we need to still have that in mind that, you know, we're all in this together. So that will be my call to action to really embody this, that we're all in this together. Ashe, thank you so much, Lise, for your words of wisdom, authenticity, deep introspection, and all the actionable insights that you provided to our listeners, viewers, and our ecosystem at large. And that always at Setsi, we begin or close the way we began, by acknowledging our creator, by acknowledging our ancestors, by acknowledging the original stewards of the various lands we're on. We acknowledge all those who toiled without compassion or compensation. We acknowledge all our elders and community stalwarts whose shoulders we stand on as we build, share, and learn together for our collective liberation and sovereignty. Thank you so much, Lise, for all that you do for so many. Thanks to you. <laughs>